I'm Andy Stevens, your host for this afternoon. I'll be managing the chat session along with our Promethean advocate and Usher. Ideally, we would like everyone to see the questions and answers being chatted. So please make sure you select all participants from the drop down menu in the window before sending your chat. If you want to privately ask something, please chat to all panelists. Janice Pranstatter, Promethean Teaching and Learning Consultant for the UK and Ireland will be presenting today, so I'm just going to pass you over to her to get started. Thanks, Andy. Um, just a bit of housekeeping to start off with. We will be using the chat tonight. We won't be answering the Q&A, so please make sure that if you do have a question or something to say, that you use that chat window. Also, I won't be able to view the chat. I keep the windows closed so that they don't cover up the screen. Um, so make sure that you do select that all participants, or if you want to speak, speak um, personally to a panelist or privately to a panelist, then choose one of the panelists' names from the top as well. Okay, so let's get started. And. Uh, I am using a, we had a, I had a bit of a technical issue with my normal computer, so I am using another computer today that I'm not as familiar with, um, and I don't have my headset in, so I hope everybody is able to hear me clearly enough today. Okay, so on screen now, you can see some of the content that I'm planning on covering today. It might not look like I have too much there, um, but uh, Believe me, I had a hard time trying to narrow it down to fit it into our half hour, 45 minutes at the most time slot that we have. So once again, this session um, is a bit feature led, but what I try to do is put in pedagogical examples as, as I go along to try and help demonstrate how integrating multimedia can support and enhance your flip chart lessons. Now, as we know, there's a huge amount of rich media available on the web today, which can be integrated quite nicely into your flip chart lessons. This can take the form of high resolution images, video, flash animation, and more. And Active and Fire has a way of supporting it all, and it does it very nicely. There are several ways that you can insert media into your flip charts, and today I'm hoping that I can take you through most of them. I think there's some that I'm not covering, because the one thing with Active Inspire um, that we do know is that there are often multiple ways to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm just choosing the way that is most logical for me. So let's get started. So in the main menu at the top of your flip chart here, you'll have the option here for insert. Okay, and there's two ways that you can insert. You can insert um, media, and you can also insert a link. The other way you can find that, that menu is on your toolbar, just clicking on your toolbar, and again, you have insert, and you can go into media or link from your toolbar as well. So it's whatever way you find the work works the best. So I'm just going to start out with insert media. Okay, when I click that, you'll notice that it opens up another window. And this essentially is a window into the hard drive on my computer. So it shows me all of the files um, and applications and programs and things that I have um, installed on my computer. And what I want to do is I'm just going to start out with, with putting a picture in. So I could go into my picture library, but as this isn't my normal laptop, this picture library doesn't have very much in it. So I've got some um, resources that I'm going to use for this particular webinar, and I've just saved them onto my desktop in a folder there called Using Media. Okay, so I can just click on that to open it. And what I want to do is I'm going to click on my little folder here that says People, and I've got a picture here. So I can bring in a high resolution image just by going into my um, computer hard drive, selecting the picture I want, and then opening it. Once I have it on my page, it is like any other object I put on the flip chart page, so it means that I can edit it. So as you can see, I can rotate it so it's the correct size there. And this is this is my wee boy. Um, and this is this time last week. It was amazing how much snow we had within um, 24 hours last week. And it is all gone now, and it's raining. So anyway, we can we can bring in um, pictures very simply like that, just using the insert media. Okay. Also, with insert media, um, I could bring in other types of files as well. So it's not just images. 
I can, um, this is a really nice way to just get quick links to things, to resources that I want to use for a particular lesson. So for example here, I could put a quick link into a flip chart. Just click on it and open it. Oh, you can see there it's put it as a little image. So if I clicked on that, that would launch another flip chart. I'm just going to take that away. Um, or I could create a link by using media. I'll do that again. Um, to a doc that I have on my computer. So I can click that to open it, and you'll see it gives me a little image there. If the, I don't have Word on this particular computer, but if I did, that would have um, given me a link to a Word document, and I would have seen the little W on it. I can also link to some programs that I have on my computer. So um, what I've done here is I've linked to JoJibra, so any math teachers that are out there that use that. So what it means is that I can have everything that I need for my lesson all in this one location, um, meaning that I don't have to click between screens and go to different locations to find the tools I need for this particular lesson. So whether it's a worksheet, a web link, or another program that we're going to use. By using the insert media, I can, I can bring everything I want right into the one location. The only caveat to that is, the one drawback with the insert media is um, it doesn't embed that in the flip chart. So what that means, if you, were, if you were to move that file to somewhere else on your computer, all of these links would be broken. Okay? So in a minute, I'm, I'm going to recommend their second option, which is the insert link. But just before I come to that, I want to come back to um, the images for a little bit more. Okay? So as I said, what I really like using that insert media is for getting an image from my computer and putting it into my flip chart very quickly. So I can again just click on that, find the image I want, open it, and put it into my page. So you can see a higher resolution one, nice and big, wonderful picture of me, and I can just resize that as I want in here. What I can also do, um, that I like is, is bringing in a picture like this, an image like this, is that I could go to my tools here and I can go to my camera tool and I can use the free hand. So I could use my camera tool to just really quickly draw on. It's not very easy with a mouse on the computer, much easier to do this on the board. Okay, and paste that to the current page. So I can cut out all the background from a picture and have all of these little um, people. So one thing that I used to do, um, one thing that I used to do at the beginning of my school year was take a digital photograph of all of the pupils in my class, and then I would cut them out, and I would have all of these little um, classroom figures that I could use in my flip chart. And I'm, I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Okay, so as you can see, I could use the insert media as a good way to bring in um, pictures that I have stored on my computer. But what happens if I want a picture that isn't actually on my computer? Well, there are various ways that I can bring, it, bring those into the software as well. So if I just open up my internet here, my internet explorer, bear with me for a second, doesn't want to come up. Right, we'll go, there we go, okay. And if I find an image that I like, Close down a couple of my tabs there. Here we go. I have it. Um, so let's say the BBC website here. I'm just going to minimize that window a wee bit. And what I can do with the software is certain images, like this one on the BBC website, I can actually drag it from a web page and drop it directly onto my flip chart page. And now you can see that that image I can pick up and move around, and it's fully editable as well. Okay? If I come back to the internet page again for a second, we have another, I'll look at another one. So this time I've just done a Google search, and um, this particular Google one won't let me just drag and drop it onto the page. So the other way that I can get that onto my flip chart is to just right click on the page, and then I want to copy it, go back to my flip chart page right click and I'm going to paste and you can see I've now got that image on there as well. My warning about using any of these methods from the internet though is that you do need to be aware of copyright. 
So we, we have covered this in one of our other um, webinars where we talked about doing safe searches when you're adding images in. So just do be aware that, that copyright does apply. So taking these images, um, you need to make sure you have that copyright permission to do so. Okay, I'm just going to reset my page for a minute. Okay. So as I started to say, one thing that I used to do at the beginning of the school year was to take photographs of the children in my class and then I would use them in various ways throughout the year. So by bringing them into the software, like I've done with my little picture of Ethan here, and I'm just going to make that bigger, okay, is, as I said, I can take the camera tool and I can use that freehand and I can draw around that to take out all the background and just have my children in the picture, okay? And what I can do is I've created, if I come into my resource library here, um, a resource bank of all of the students in my class. And aren't they lovely students that I've, I've chosen for my class as well this year? So how could we use that? So for example, let's say my class were going to be going on a trip to the new Scottish Parliament building, and we're doing some prep and getting ready in preparation for going on that trip. So what I can do is having an image that I've taken from somewhere and having that locked on the background of my page, I could get members of my class here. So I'll get Patricia, bring her on and drag her on to that um, flip chart page. And then I could have them talk about, so we could, they could text it or I could have them type up or write up on the, the display um, what they're interested in, what they want to know, what they're hoping to find out when they go on a trip to the Parliament. Or I could use a sound recording tool within the software to have them record that as well and have these little sound files here. And then this is a great record pre-visit that we could then revisit at the end um, to have a, a, a closer look at what they thought about it and figure out if they did actually learn what they were hoping to find out when they were there. Okay. So just a little, a little trick there. Okay, just before I go on, I've seen some comments coming in. So I'm just gonna ask um, Andy if there's any quick questions that I can answer. Yeah, we've had a few that have come in. Um, the first one being, I teach in a primary school, so we use Active Inspire Primary and not Studio. Um, are there any details about um, using it for primary? Everything that I'm showing you, I'm just using the, the Studio skin right now, but everything that I'm showing you, you can do in Active Primary as well. So the, the camera tool, the files at the top are exactly the same, as a, is the main menu on your toolbar. The only difference that I've shown you so far is this tool um, icon here. The tool um, in Active Primary, you would still click on the tools icon in your toolbar, but all of the tools would appear down at the bottom here, and you would pick your camera from there. Okay, but everything that you've seen so far, you can do in either the studio skin that I'm using or the primary skin. That's great. Okay, the next one uh, was, does anyone know how to ensure that images are copyright safe from Google? So you can do an advanced search in Google that would allow you to narrow it down um, for images that are free for sharing and editing. Um, so if you go into a, a Google search, a Google images search, that advanced search option is just in the toolbar at the top of Google. As I said, we did cover that in one of the other webinars um, and I'll try and find that and put that on the, the little comments under this YouTube video when we put it on YouTube. Great. I think you can also Google royalty free images and things like that as well. There's a few yes, sites out there. Loads of sites for that. Yes. I always do free images for education. Great. Um, next question. How do you save an image as a .as4 file so it shows in the resource bank? Okay. So anything that I put on my page, let's go back to this one here, um, I can, anything I have and any object I have on my page that I put into my flip chart page, I can drag it and drop it into a resource library. So I've chosen my resources, class photos, and all I need to do is drag and drop it and you can see that the picture of Ethan is now in that resource folder. Okay, so Super. it's as simple as that. Superb. Um, 
Anne is all over this question, but I'll I'll just uh, ask it anyway for for the good of everyone. Um, can we save images like our class pictures in our uh, in our resources to use later? So how, how do they go about that? So that's just what I've shown you right there. Is so the just, same process, yeah. If, if you bring them into the software and then you just open up the folder that you want them to go into and then drag and drop them in. Great. I think that's everything. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, now, as we know, video is another valuable media source for using in a classroom. So let's take a look at how you can insert this option to embed video into your flip chart page. Active Inspire works well with many different video files. And bear with me for a second. I don't seem to be on the right page here. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, before I do my video, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to come back to, to that file. So remember I said um, before when we were doing insert media um, that if I inserted a document, a link to a document, that if I moved my file, that link would be broken. The way around that is to do insert link and file this way instead. And I can go in and find those documents again. And this time when I click open, I have this window that comes up. And this window then would allow me to say I want that an image icon and I want it to be stored in the flip chart. And this is the most important thing here. This means that this that Word document is now stored, embedded into this flip chart. So if I move the flip chart, then that Word document will move with it. Okay, so you can see that there. So um, that way, this is, this is the much better way of linking to different documents that you have on your computer if you want to make sure that they always stay with that regardless of, of where you have that file placed. Okay, so back to videos. So as I was saying, Active Inspire works well with many different video file types. I've listed a few down below, and these, this isn't the definitive list. Um, these are the ones that I have used and I know work very well. If you want to see a fuller list, um, then I would suggest you go onto Promethean Planet and if you do a search for audio video test, um, then Planet member Dennis Warren has put together a nice flip chart um, that just shows you some of the different sound file and video file types that work well in Active Inspire. Okay, so do have a look at that if you want to find out more about file types. So to put the first video on the page, I'm just going to go up to insert link and again I'm going to choose file. And back in that, fo that folder I have, but remember this could be anywhere on the hard drive of my computer, I'm going to go into videos there and then I'm going to select a, a little video. And all I need to do then is click open. Now this will open up the insert file menu. So there's different ways that I could put this onto the page. The first way I'm going to do it is just as um, an image icon. I could make it an action object, and um, what that does is you won't notice anything on the page, um, but it makes it a little transparent object that when you were to click on an area of the page, it would launch the video. I could also attach it to an existing object. So if I had an image on the page that I wanted to be my action object to launch the video, this is the one I would choose there. Okay, so I'm going to start out, first of all, just with the image one. And again, remembering that I would want to store that in the flip chart. And I'm just going to click OK. And you can see I now have that little image on there. And when I click that, it will then open up a window and play that video on my page. And I can pick that window up and move that window around if I want to as well. Okay, and I'm just going to stop that. And everybody will be no doubt wondering what's going to happen in that video. The other way that I can do it, though, and the way that I prefer, is to do insert, and again, link file. And this time, I want to um, do, we'll do the hippo in the jungle this time. Um, no, in fact, we'll do the car one. I'm going to open it. And this time, I want it to um, put it in as a placeholder. So again, store it in the file. And I could decide that I want it to auto-play so that when I turn the page, it will automatically play. If it's something short, I can put it on a loop. Um, and I also just want to make sure in this case that my controller is there. And this video that I'm using right now is an MP4. Now what I can do when I have placeholder selected is I can change the placeholder image. So instead of 
having this image that you can see here, the little media image on my page, what I can do is click it and then I can take a picture of a part of that video. So what that's done is taken a still image. And now when I click OK, you'll see that I have that on my page. Once it's here, it is an object, so I can select it. I can resize it. Just remember, it has to do with the, the resolution of the video. So um, if you make it too big, you might distort it. And if I play it, there we go. You can see that I get my little um, controller down at the bottom. So this allows me to pause the video, or I could stop the video. I could move the video to any point that I wanted it to be at, and I can also adjust the sound from here as well. But the other really nice thing that I can do with this control is I can take snapshots of the video as well. Okay, so once the video has ended, I'm just going to resize that so we can move that back out of the way. Okay. You can see that I've taken still image shots of that moving video. So why would I ever want to do that? Well, let's have a look at a couple examples. So this is a really nice one here. We've got um, a science lesson, and um, they were discussing Newton's third law. So we've got some links here at the top, one to a PowerPoint, um, but we also have a video. So I've got a little link to an MPEG there, and you can see that this is the video that, that you see in the little pictures here. So what the teacher did was take snapshots of the different parts of that video to put them on the page um, to use for a discussion around Newton's third law. Okay? Another example of that is actually back on this page here, and I'm going to launch this one. Um, this is quite an old one, but I love this. This, this was a teacher um, that I've actually lost in contact with that, that um, used to do some work for Promethean. And what she did was she took a movie trailer. And it's these kind of things. You do have to be careful with copyright for videos. Um, and, it, you know, you, you, as I keep saying, you can't just use everything. But if you do hunt around, there are resources, video resources and images that you can use for education. Um, and movie trailers are really good for that. So you can take a little movie trailer and embed it in. Okay, so I'm not going to play that. But what I want to show you is what this teacher did with this particular lesson. So after they watched the video, she then used that snapshot um, to, to be able to take the snapshot. And again, I apologize for the text. if it's all messed up here. Um, as I said, it's not my computer, so it, it's converting the text over and it's not picking it up quite right. But anyway, you can see that she's taken little snapshots from the movie and used it for a sequencing activity. She also made use of the voiceover from the introduction to do some sequencing and also some sound files, so matching vocabulary. So a really great little lesson, all from using the video clip that um, she found on, on the internet for a trailer for a movie. This is another one that I really like, and this is a um, modern foreign language lesson. And um, they were looking at uh, rooms in the house. And so what the teacher did was had a little video file for each of the different rooms. Okay. So played the little videos, and then um, the class were to, to match the vocabulary to the correct room as well. Um, so just another nice way of using video in there. If you do want to find out a bit about um, the multimedia settings within Active Inspire, um, the best place to go is to the help file. So to find the help files if you've never been there, you go to help and then click contents and this will open up help files on the internet. And if you want to find out about multi Multimedia specifically, I would do a search for either multimedia settings or multimedia properties. But I do have to say that these help files are fantastic for learning how to do anything within the software. So I would recommend having a look there if you've never gone there and used that before. Okay, just before I move on to the next part, Andy, are there any questions that I can answer? 
Um, yeah, how do I insert an image on top of an FLV or a movie file? Um, I would like to be able to resize my imported SWF and overlay still images on top, but I haven't been able to. So um, that is just what I'm going to come on to right now is with flash video, um, so dot FLV or SWF. Um, so I'll take some other questions first, and then we can come back to that one if I don't answer it. No problem. Um, any idea why the text is overlapping? It happened with me, and I don't know why. The reason is is that um, the the com particular computer that I'm on doesn't have the font that that flip chart was designed in. So what it's done is it switched it to what it thinks would be the closest font, and then that just messed up the text boxes. So all I needed to do was go along and just stretch those text boxes out again. You often get that if you've created it on a Mac and bring it onto a PC because some of the fonts are different. Great. Um, what if I had a video on my laptop while I prepared my lesson and took the lesson using a flash memory to be used in class? Do I need to take a copy of the video? And if you embed it in the video, so if you did it the way, the second way that I've showed you, so if you're doing an insert link and file, and then make sure that you say that you want it stored in the flip chart. You shouldn't have to. Great. And the last one um, is asking about um, if you can play videos offline. You can play these videos that I'm showing so far. Yes, you can. Okay. We haven't covered um, embedded HTML. That would be streaming. So these videos are actually videos that I have installed on my computer, so therefore I don't need to be online in order to play them. Great. Okay, I think that's everything. Okay. So annotating over flash video is slightly different. Um, now, I hadn't intended to fully answer the question that I was asked before, and it's not something that I've tested out on this computer. Um, so I will try and do it now. But, but if I don't quite get it answered, maybe the person that asked that um, could, could send it to me in an email, and I'll definitely respond with, with an answer then. Okay? So flash video... Um, handles or Active Inspire has an option to handle flash video slightly differently than other video types. Um, what it allows you to do is to annotate over a video. Okay, so the way I do this is, and you have to follow, um, I found that I have to follow these three steps very, very carefully. So, and I can see that I've got lastly, secondly, and finally, which doesn't make sense. I think that should be first or that is my last anyway. I see yeah, I've got that a bit mixed up. But what I want to do is insert, file, link, and then file again. And this time I'm going to choose a flash video, so a dot .flv, and I'm just going to click that open. Okay, my window here comes up again. What I want to do is make it a placeholder, store it in the flip chart, um, and I'm just going to leave it with autoplay. And I'm going to change the image. So I'm just going to let it play a little bit so that I can take a different placeholder image, okay? And then just click OK, and that puts it on my page. Remember, I can select it so I can pick it up and move it. It doesn't have to be there. With Flash, I don't have the controller. All I need to do is click on and off it to start it and stop it, okay? What I need to do now is I need to select the video, and then I'm going to go into the property browser. Okay, so this is the property browser. And again, it is the same in primary, and your property browser will be up here in your browser window. It's a little page here with the ticks on it. Down at the bottom here, I have my multimedia options. And what I want to do here is I want to force the overlay. So I'm going to change that to false. Okay, so it's defaulted as true. I want to change it to false. And then I'm just going to turn the page and turn back again. Okay. Now, the last thing I have to now do, and it's really important that you leave this as the last step, is to go into my file and settings, and under multimedia, I now want to click force overlay mode for flash. I click done. Okay. So now, if I play that video, let's see if it's going to play. There we go. Choose my pen tool. You see, I have my pen here, 
but I also have my pen on top of the video. So what I could then do is to annotate on top of it. We could stop, we could write things on, but it allows me to annotate on top of that video. This maybe isn't the best video for annotating, but it's the one that I had to hand, um, and I hope that that gives you an idea of how to do that. Now, the other question I had was, um, I'm assuming, was how can you place um, an image so it partly went over? So by changing those settings, you can see here that I could have things images, objects on my page that would just sit over top of the edge of that video. Okay? I hope that that covered it for everybody for that question. Um, but that's how we do it with Flash. So again, the steps are very, very, um, you have to be very specific with the steps. You want to insert it first, then select it, make sure you go into the properties to change the properties, Turn the page, turn it back again, and then go into your settings and make sure that you've got that force overlay mode for flash ticked. That has to be the last step because I have found that it doesn't work if you don't make that the last step. Okay? So I can see some people are having trouble with sound. I do apologize. We always seem to have this that some people get the sound absolutely no problem and other people um, aren't so lucky. We will have a recording of this webinar and we will be putting it up on our YouTube channel as well. I am hoping that I get a new laptop um, when I go down to the head office this week. So hopefully I will be able to get the video recording done and onto the website and out to you guys as soon as I possibly can. Okay. One last way that um, we can insert video on is to actually use streaming video. And we do this by using um, an embed code. And one of the best sites for doing this with is, of course, um, YouTube. TeacherTube also works very well, but I'm going to use YouTube today. So to insert embedded HTML, I want to go up to Insert, Link, and then along to Embedded HTML. I then want to go to my website. I'm going to find the website um, where I have a video, and I can see I don't have it open, so that's okay. We'll just go to YouTube. And I can type in, and um, we're going to do limit physics, just because I saw them earlier and I quite like them. And I'm going to click on my little video here. Okay. So once I come in here, I'm just going to pause that video. Actually, I'll let it play past that um, the ad. There we go. We'll just let, let it play that ad and skip it. Okay. And I'm just going to pause that video. So to get the embed code, I want to scroll down the page um, until I find the share option here on YouTube and click share. And then I want to go to embed. Now, I can change the embed options here. So I can have it in different sizes, different resolutions, and I can also um, change some of the displays. The one thing I like to do is Click that one. I don't want it to show me suggested videos afterwards, but I'm going to leave everything else the same. And then what I want to do is I want to copy this embed code. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that and then go back into my flip chart and I'm going to paste that into that window. Now, there's one step that's really important and you have to do this with YouTube, otherwise the video won't work, is I just need to go into that embed code there and I want to take the S out of HTTP. So it comes in as HTTPS. You just want to remove that S, um, and then it will work fine. And then click OK. And we'll just give it a minute, and you can see that it's now embedded that on my page, and I could click it to play. So the thing to remember with this, though, is this is dependent on you being on the internet. So this is a link to the internet. It's streaming video. So therefore, if I come off the, the internet, this link won't work. Okay, so that's a big thing to remember here. But if your school does allow you to use YouTube or streaming video websites like YouTube, it is a brilliant way to get fantastic content to use in your lessons and lots of nice sized videos for using as well. Now you can see that. Um, it looks a bit funny, but what I can do is I can um, edit that box as well. So I can move that around. I can 
pick that up and I could move that around as well. Okay, so that's just going to insert, link, and embed HTML. Now, I'm not going to show you that again, but remember, you are going to have a link to this, vidding, this video, so you will be able to get to it um, and watch that again um, so you can remind yourself how I did that. Okay. Now, the other thing that's really nice, though, about the embedded HTML is that it's not just um, YouTube videos. So, starting to see a lot more sites that are, are using um, embed code. Some of them I've managed to use successfully and others I haven't, and, and it's just a little bit of trial and error to see what works. But one site that does use it quite well is Twitter. So, for example, here, um, if I click this link, what I actually have is a Twitter feed. So I did um, a search for Storm Desmond, and then it comes up with a live Twitter feed on here um, of stories on YouTube, or sorry, stories on Twitter having to do, it's not wanting to scroll very well right now, um, but it was doing that earlier, so have a live feed. So if we were doing, um, you know, a, a um, the, the word has escaped me, um, if we were looking at a, a current affairs story or we're doing current affairs in our class, then, then we could have um, a little embedded YouTube link or Twitter link coming up with some of the key headlines under a search that we've done. Okay. And I just do that from the Twitter website to get the embed code. Now, I also have found some good sites that have little animated GIFs that give you embed code as well. So it's just having a little hunt around and find things that work. What you can also do is you can put some great animations into your flip chart as well. So this little one here um, is, is I'm going to show you a couple of animations. And what animations do is they kind of liven up your page with it and make it seem a little bit more three-dimensional than two-dimensional without detracting from the main teaching that's going on the page. So for example, here I have a little widget on my page here. Um, and I could have that on there, and every day it automatically just changes to the next day, to the correct day. So I've got my little calendar on here. And if you go into Promethean Planet and you do a search for animation or flash, you'll come up with some um, great resource packs that uh, Promethean and other users have put on Promethean Planet that have these little flash animations and widgets. Okay? So, for example, this one here is um, activities in a flash. So I could do something like this one here. And this is bubble blocks. So once I put it on, I just need to click off so that so it gets rid of my handles. Let's see. Make that one easy to get rid of my handles. Bear with me for a second. There we go. Okay. And then when I click back on there, I can now click that to play. And this is a nice little one where you have to make as many words as you can. So just dragging or just clicking on it and seeing what words you can make and then enter it. Okay, so a nice little game. And this is just from a resource pack on Promethean Planet. And obviously, I, I'm not doing very well at doing it at the same time I'm, I'm speaking. Um, other little ones that are in here. I love this little one, Chess Timer. So if I put this one on, oh, no, nope, that's a class calculator. So you do have a class calculator there. And um, we've got this little one here, chess timer. So if I was doing a group competition, I could have two different groups. So I start the first one, then I switch to the second one. A nice little chess timer. We're taking time, taking turns there. Okay, let's reset that page. So lots of great little ones that are here that you can use. And that's activities in a flash is what that one's called. There's also a great one on timers that's got lots of different class timers that you can use as well. I'll bring this one on here. Okay. So we've got a little class timer there. Let's set it for eight seconds. Start. And you can see that it burns the little fuse. And then when the time is up, my rocket is going to explode. Okay. So it's a wonderful little flash animation. Um, there's also a, quite a lot of holiday specific ones as well. So, you know, we've got uh, Christmas here coming up. Um, so there are some great images. So we've got some still images. Some of these ones are also animated ones. I'll we'll pull on the snowman 
you can see here, we've got an animation and you can see the little snow twinkling in the background. So again, just ways to add little bits and pieces onto your lesson. I've got some little gifts here as well that I can drag on. You can see my little cat there and little person. Okay, so let's have a look at that actually in context. Now, um, I didn't point out, I should have. Um, right here on my page, there is a Promethean Planet super user in the state that has created a couple of really great flip charts talking about how to use animated GIFs. So if you do want to find out more about using animated GIFs in a flip chart, um, have a look on Promethean Planet. You can do a search for animated GIFs, and it's um, Pat Verhoeven um, is the, the woman who has submitted them, and they are really, really useful. One thing I have found is that they are a couple years old, so some of the links that she provides you for sites seem to be broken. But she's got lots of fantastic GIFs on the actual flip chart that you can drag into your own resource library and save to be able to use. And she has some great examples, like these ones, of how you can use a GIF just to bring that page to life. So I love this, just having the little sparkly letters at the top. Um, and then it's just the standard left mum 10, 10 grams. Okay, so I want them to, to make the picture using the shape. But it just adds something having that little animation on the bottom. This is another one that I really like. So um, story writing. We can click on them and get them moving. And we've got the little guy down here. And it's just having that little bit of movement, that little bit of animation, as I said, just brings that page to life. Okay, I'm aware of the time and how we're running short on it. Um, so I'll quickly take some questions on that section, Andy, before we move on to the sound bit. Great, thanks. Um, there's been one question um, about whether or not we can embed Flash games. So you should be able to embed Flash games, like for example, that bubble one that I showed you, the, the, the bubble letters. Um, that is a flash game as well. I have successfully done it in the past. Um, I used to be able to get one from the primary games website, but I don't seem to be able to download those anymore. So you would insert them as if you were inserting a movie file. So again, it's about finding the code. Yeah. Okay. Um, and someone has asked about getting rid of the white background of an image. Um, yeah, so if you have an image on the page that has a white background, um, so for example, uh, it was two pages back, this one here, you, you did notice that it had a, a white background. So I can just change my page to show that to people if they didn't happen to notice. You can see there's a white background there. I don't know if I can with this one um, because because it's a flash image, but on, on an image itself, you, you can pick through the white. So you would just do that um, from your resources here, you would select the image and then you have the, the option to pick through. Um, I'm just trying to think, I don't think I've got one. Um, let's see if I can, let's try it with this one. This one's not going to be perfect. So I just go down to miscellaneous down here and then I have the option to pick through. So I can say true. Um, and what I want to do is I just want to pick through, to say I want to pick through that white and then I want to make the transparent true. And you can see it's taken away the white behind it. But that depends on how the picture is drawn as well. So you can see that that, that wouldn't be very good to do that with this particular image. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's it in the way of questions. Just lots of really uh, positive feedback, lots of thank you messages. And I think okay. everyone's taken quite a lot from this. OK. I promise I've just got five minutes left to get my sound in. Um, so sound is another great media tool to use within lessons. So the software comes in, in the main install, you get a sounds folder in here that has lots of great little sound effects that you can use in your flip chart. And um, I can have them just pulling them onto my page. They come up as a little sound icon. When I click it, you can see that it plays the sound. I can stop the sound just by clicking on it there. Um, but if I want to actually have the cat play the sound, the easiest way to do it is like this. I just drag the, sh the, the icon for the sound on top of the cat. And I'm just going to go into design mode to disable it. So I want to resize that. 
I'm just going to stretch it so that it's over top of the cat. So I don't have, to, I know I don't have to select a specific spot on the cat to get the sound. And then I'm just going to change that, the translucency, to make it transparent. And then I'm going to group those two objects together. Okay, so now when I click on the cat, the cat meows. And my cat's not liking it. She's trying to get out of the room now. <laughs> okay, so as simple as that. So you just hide it by dragging it over. And because that's grouped together, I can then pick that up and I can move that icon, around, that image around. Now, one thing that I do have here is, you'll notice my sound controller didn't come up. So if you don't want that sound controller to come up each time, what you need to do is just go into multimedia and deselect that sh show sound controller. I'm just going to select it again so you can see when I play it, that sound controller comes up. Okay? I can close it down. So let's, let's have a look at how the sound can be used. So here we have um, a nice modern foreign language lesson again. And attached to the little girl here, she asked, asked the question in French. Okay. And then the class has to decide what the correct response would be. Okay. So these obviously aren't sound files taken from here. The way the teacher has done this is gone into the tools menu, more tools. Or in primary, remember your tools open up at the bottom and you just look for your sound recorder icon and has recorded sound. So once I started that, I can record myself speaking and then I press stop to stop it. And you can see that little sound file is now on my screen and I can click that to play that back. Once I started that, I can record myself speaking. Okay, so you can create your own sound file as well. And another one, I've used this in another in a couple of flip charts before because I just love it. And this one was a nursery group um, visit to the pond, and um, the teacher wanted to find out what they learned, and so had the class recording these great ideas of what they learned at the pond. And the tap pole can be too far when the tap pole. So just a great way of having a bit of assessment. Or imagine having that up on a parent's night, and while parents are waiting to speak to you, they could come up and find out what the class have been learning, what the class have been doing. And just to finish off, one last thing, um, as if I haven't given you enough information already tonight, Active Inspire actually allows you to play two different types of sound files at the same time on your flip chart page. So um, what it does is it gives you two different controllers, one that will show track one and one that will show track two. So track one would be the types of sound files like I've just shown you, so just short little sound files. Um, but track two can play more complex ones, um, in particular MP3. So with this one, what I can do is if I go up to insert and link, and what I want to do is I'm just going to link to a sound file that I downloaded off the internet. So I've got lovely um, decks of halls here that we're going to use. And I'm just going to attach that to an existing object. And I'm going to put it attached to that little present there. Okay. And again, store in my flip chart and just okay it. Now when I hover over that present, there's a little play button. If I click that, it's then going to play deck the halls for me. But each of the little baubles on my tree, so maybe we're doing a lesson on um, letter sounds. I can then click on it, and I don't know. I don't know if you can hear it. They're quite quiet, but all the little sound files. Okay, so I can play two different sound files, and you can see here it shows me which one is track one and which one is track two. Okay, so maybe not the most pedagogically sound example of this, but hey, a nice way to finish coming up to Christmas. Okay, and brilliant that I can have those two different sound files playing on my one flip chart page. So that's me at a finish. Andy, are there any questions before um, I hand it back to you to just wrap up? Um, 
Someone's asked, um, can I get speech to text from my mo student's mobile device onto the whiteboard? Um, that is a good question, and I don't know. I, I think you can, but I don't know the exact answer right now. I'd, I'd need to look that up for you. So if they want to send me an email, um, I can answer that after this session. That's great. Um, if you drop the cat into your resources with the sound file grouped with it, will the two stay together for future use without having to yes. rebuild? Yes. That is what is so fantastic. If I change the properties of an object and then save it into the resource library, it will save with those properties. So that, that includes with the sound. So grouping those two objects together means that they stay grouped in my resource library and will work with the sound when I pull it out. OK, and uh, this one's not so much to do with multimedia, but someone's asked um, if there's access to a greater range of pen colors. Oh, if you right click on any of the swatches, the, the color swatches, and this is the same in primary as well, if you right click on it, you'll see you get your color wheel and you have all the colors you want. So you can create your own custom colors to put on there. Fantastic. Right, that's everything. Perfect. Okay, Andy, I'll hand it back to you then to just finish off. Great. Well, thanks very much, Janice, and thanks everyone for joining us today. I'm sure that Janice has given you some good ideas. Uh, for the f fantastic features that Active Inspire has to offer. It was another jam-packed session, but don't worry, if you weren't able to take it all in, as previously mentioned, this session has been recorded, so you'll shortly receive a link via email to view it in your own time. If you have any questions about the session, please feel free to email Janice directly. Her email address is now on screen. There we go. Um, we're also on Twitter, so please give us a follow at Promethean UKI. Um, and you can also follow Janice at TLC for UKI. And we're also on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash Promethean UKI. And also, if you visit bit.ly forward slash capital A L L capital C O L L A B, so that's all collab, you can find a range of useful materials around collaborative learning. That's key, that link is case sensitive. Okay, thanks everyone for joining us today, um, and that concludes our session. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are in the world.